disturbed return, Zach Wilde shockingly turns out to be a human, and Grammy Award judges once again prove that they have zero idea what metal actually is. For best metal performance, the nominees are... Yes, heavy metal is alive and well. So let's take a look at what keeps it going today. Here you go. American rock legends disturbed return with a new ish album device. On their eighth full length studio effort, David Draymond and the team bring to the table exactly what their fans expect from a new disturbed record. Divisive is full of bangers fit for both metal and mainstream audience that sound undisputably disturbed live. And this, in my opinion, is both the strongest and the weakest thing about this record. You just can't see the film at all in your heart. On one hand, it really does give the diehard Disturbed fans exactly what they want. A record full of energy and power, packed with fast, sharp riffs and fury vocals by the band's unchanging leader, David Draymond. Even more, the guys even almost bring back the iconic wah in one of the songs. So, in a nutshell, Divisive is an album full of carefully and thoughtfully crafted songs, designed exactly by the formula which Disturbed created for themselves 26 years ago. Which, for a casual Disturbed listener like myself, might make this record a bit too predictable, on which they kind of raise the hot topics, yet still in a rather safe manner. Now, bad man, a bad man, another man. But even that, it is still a great record, much stronger than most of the music released lately. Very quick before we continue, as always, please do not hesitate to comment on anything you hear or see in this video, and especially if you disagree with me. Because the whole point of this channel and this digest is, of course, to start a conversation. But alright, let's continue. I don't want to hear rock is dead, okay? Because it isn't. Judas Priest continues celebrating their induction into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, shining more and more light on what was actually going on that night and what the future holds. Roughly two weeks after the actual ceremony, on which Judas Priest infamously reunited with their founding member K.K. Downing and the drummer Les Binks, who of course left the band back in 1979, we now finally have a pro shot of the entire ceremony, including the Judas Priest performance. Now, in addition to having this performance with a much better audio quality, we finally can see and pick on the little details in the interaction between the band members who were present on stage that night. And here, after watching this pro shot, I have to point out that I personally stand by every word I said in my previous video. The power and energy which was on stage that night was simply mind-blowing. And yes, this does of course include the unexpected synergy between K.K. Downing and Richie Faulkner, who, even though they'd never played on the same stage before that night, interacted great both with each other and with Rob Halford on stage. And in order to celebrate this occasion, one of the most vocal supporters of Judas Priest throughout the years, Dave Mustaine and Megadeth, released their cover on what I personally consider one of the greatest and the most overlooked Judas Priest song, Delivering the Goods. The guys of course gave this track the Megadeth sound, which I personally totally dig, and the song is already available on Amazon Music. So if you haven't yet, make sure to check it out. But anyway, since the night of the performance, both current Judas Priest members and KK Downing were very vocal about how much they loved playing on stage together and how thankful they are to the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame for that magical night. And then finally spoke about what the future holds by promoting their upcoming studio records. What? Yes, for a while now we've known that the next Judas Priest album is almost ready, on which we of course speak quite a lot on our Defenders of the Faith series. Yet this week we found out that KK's Priest sophomore record is also in the final stage of production and thus will hopefully come out sometime next year. So here you go, it does look like the world of heavy metal will be blessed with at least two Priests in the next couple of years. 
Beware. Next segment might shock you to the core, but this week, Zach Wild revealed that he is, in fact, a human being. He cannot be. In his recent interview with Ola England, Zach Wild once again spoke about the upcoming Pantera tribute tour and how he, even though of course he knew some of the Dime McDarrell's parts, has been learning the songs for a while now. Thus partially kind of revealing the tentative set list for the upcoming tour, which to be honest with you was no surprise at all. But what actually shocked the metal community was that instead of learning the Pantera songs by researching the 16th century manuscripts, Zach Wilde, like any human being, has actually been studying them with the help of YouTube. I think I may have gone on your uh, website, you know, I just on um, the city becoming or whatever, you know what I yeah, mean? Yeah, right, Watching, right. I would just go how to play, yeah. uh, you know, hostile or whatever, you yeah. know what I mean? And it would just like, I'd go onto YouTube and just see all these other amazing players yeah. playing this stuff. Oh, that's the and thing. Go, like, oh, okay. Old jokes aside, though, the first shows for the Pantera tribute are coming very, very soon. And I personally have zero doubts that both Charlie Benante and Zach Wilde will do a great job respecting their friends on stage. But I truly do not think that Zach Wilde will do everything he possibly can to sound exactly like Dime and Daryl. Even more, I truly hope he won't. Because, and I think that everyone agrees here, that this project, if it is to work, has to be a celebration of everything Pantera. And it is in fact possible if the new members keep the energy and the essence of the original Pantera sound, yet without trying to imitate their original members. Because the last thing we need in a heavy metal world is a replacement for someone who is truly irreplaceable. But on a positive note, I'm 100% sure that both Zach and Charlie know whatever I just said much better than I do. And thus I have zero doubts that the boys will try to make it just right. And so yes, I am very much excited to see the Pantera tribute on stage in a couple of weeks. If you're absolutely new to this channel, I guess now would be a perfect time to hit that like button and subscribe to Metal Pilgrim. And unless it's your first time on YouTube, I think you know where to click. So do it. I now have the honor of announcing some more. Our best metal performance, the nominees are... Ozzy Osbourne, Magadeth, Ghost, Muse, and the band Turnstile. What? Are among the nominees for the best metal performance category at the 65th Annual Grammy Awards. <laughs> Yes, it is that time of the year when the Grammy Awards pretend like they care about heavy metal and we metalheads pretend like we do care about what the Grammy Award judges say. We're gonna have a good time. Always. And this year's nominations, just like pretty much every year's, were rather surprising. At least for some. And so for the best metal performance, the band Ghost was nominated for the song Call Me Little Sunshine, Muse for their track Kill or Be Killed, the band Turnstile, which I'll be honest with you, is very and very surprising to me personally, can be considered metal by anyone. Their song Blackout, Thrash Metal Legends Magadeth for We'll Be Back, and Ozzy Osbourne for his song Degradation Rules, on which he of course collaborated with one of the founders of heavy metal, Tony Ayo. Interestingly enough though, Another Ozzy Osbourne song from exactly the same album was also nominated for the best rock performance and also for the best rock song, which just once again raises the question why do we have the separate categories if the judges do not care about any differences? And in case you're wondering, yes, that song is being the title track Patient Number 9 featuring the legendary guitarist Jeff Beck. <laughs> The thing is, I of course have zero problems with Ozzy Osbourne and Magadeth being nominated to either of those categories. Even more, I have no problems with Ghost and even Muse being nominated for the best metal performance. Because, let's be honest here, Kill or Be Killed is probably the closest Muse gets to metal. And it is actually an absolutely kick-ass song. But the only other artist who is nominated in all three of those categories is actually the band Turnstile, which, and I'll be very honest with you, I had actually no idea who they were before this news came out, so after reading about it, I actually went online and checked them out, and I have to say that their music is very high quality and it definitely deserves attention, but I simply do not understand how this particular song can be even remotely considered metal by anybody in this world. And 
And for some reason, once again, I do feel like by including this song in the list of nominees, the Grammy Awards comedy kind of deliberately underscores the importance of metal in the world. And they do not even have to go into the underground subgenres of heavy metal, since there were kind of a lot of mainstream metal albums released this year. By the way, what do you guys personally think about the mainstream institutions who are trying, but not really trying, to include more metal? And do you think that we, metalheads, should absolutely ignore them, or quite the opposite, push them, and get metal the recognition from the mainstream it actually deserves? Please let us know in the comments. First of all, I'm very curious to find out, and secondly, in such way, this video will be viewed by way more people. Write that down, write that down! Let me kill Mr. and Ozzy Osbourne reunite on stage once again. Well, kind of. A couple of weeks ago it was very loudly and proudly announced that the famous Ozfest will be held virtually in a metaverse world this year. And I'll be honest with you, even though I'm not really that old, I had absolutely zero idea what that actually meant. And for the record, going on Twitter and asking for someone to explain it to me brought absolutely zero results. How, how do you do <laughs> but, but, but. So I had no other choice but to register in that metaverse, go through the pains of creating my own character who for the record looks nothing like me, and learned how to operate it in the metaverse just to be able to get to that venue in which I actually failed. Shame! But I want you to know and remember that I did that with the only purpose so that you don't have to. <laughs> so yeah, honestly, I actually failed in the attempt to attend that virtual concert. But in my head, I actually imagined it to feature some kind of unreleased live recording by Motorhead, Ozzy Osbourne and everybody else, and for a virtual representation of the entire band with an actual production to create this ambiance of an actual live concert, which I would still not have considered a proper concert, but I do agree that it would have been a kind of cool and innovative approach to an online show. But Instead, uh, we got this. I actually kind of think it's priceless. But yeah, it kind of feels like actually going to an Ozfest. Finish. As I always say, heavy metal is about personal freedom, so if someone enjoys this kind of shows, that's absolutely great for them. But I'm very seriously and without any sarcasm, am asking you to explain to me what I'm missing here, because I personally, absolutely, do not understand this. But in reality, there is a slight chance that I'm just very, very eager to see any of my favorite metal bands live, which I'm sadly not able to do because of the war in my country. So here is just a reminder that the biggest world since World War II is going on right now in the middle of Europe. So guys, please continue supporting Ukraine in any way you personally can. As always, there will be some links, including to the nonprofit I have founded in the comments. In order to close this episode and in my attempt to branch out and speak not only about Iron Maiden and Judas Priest on this channel, although I did of course speak about Judas Priest in this episode, and I simply cannot be quiet about the fact that the reissue of The Number of the Beast by Iron Maiden, including the live concert Beast over Hammersmith, has been released this week on vinyl, and from the photos you Metal Pilgrim sent me, it looks absolutely kick-ass. But here are five metal albums which were released this week. So technically, I guess, it is the newest metal you can possibly listen to.
and which bands were you listening to this week? Please let us know in the comments. As always, thank you so much for watching this video, guys, and we will prevail. Slava Ukraine!